Before we can shotcrete, we need to add a number of layers to support that shotcrete. Horizontal rebar, then vertical rebar, and then metal lath to actually catch the shotcrete. This time we're also adding a layer of fine fiberglass mesh to prevent shotcrete from blowing through the metal lath. On this first day of lath, Zach and Xavier, a couple kids I first contacted through the local high school, are helping out. Once the rebar is in place, tying it is pretty straightforward even for these young guys. From another angle, after the rebar is in, we put a row of fine fiberglass screen. This is the same stuff you would use for a screen door, except we bought it in 100 foot long rolls. Then we back it with metal lath to hold it up against the shotcrete. This gets tied tightly to the steel frame but loosely to the rebar so that the concrete can get around it and embed the rebar. For the end of the dormers I just welded up some rebar, mostly taking advantage of triangle shapes. I mounted the window box directly to the rebar. The next day we got playing with that rotating mount again. Sherry put wire ties at every intersection to resist the load of the shotcrete. I also put the window box into the other two dormers. Same plan as before, but smaller. On this third day, we only had a couple hours, so we started up on a high section. Kids have been really itching to climb all over this thing, and after spending some time up there and concluding that the welds were secure, we eventually let them. A fourth short day, and Cherry is further up the master bedroom walls, working with Michael. Getting the metal lath tied on requires one person to push the wire through and a second person to catch it and twist it. I was busy on other parts of the build, so Sherry worked with the boys to get most of it done. They could give it enough of a twist that it wouldn't fall off, and then Sherry would come back on the other side and check and adjust as necessary. On this day I had a couple helpers, so I focused on rebar again. I managed to weld these first pieces in right away, but for the second vault, I mainly looked after measuring and bending, and Dan and Bonnie tied it into place. Pretty straightforward, but tedious. I came back the next evening on my own to take care of the welding. By this point I was on my new bigger generator, and the extra power actually made it a lot easier to weld. It's amazing how fast the evening flies by when you're welding. I decided the dark wasn't enough to make me go home, but eventually the mosquitoes were. Another Saturday and my parents came down to help. We mostly focused on the ICF wall that weekend, but while my father was repairing the electrical fault on my skid steer, my mother and I put up some more rebar, and I did some quick welding. Including some days that I didn't quite catch with the time-lapse camera, I would say we have about 60 man-hours in, and we're about one-third of the way through the rebar and lath portion of the bedroom wing. Originally we planned to finish this, and some other steps, so we could get shotcrete up before winter, but by the end of September we realized that that wouldn't quite work out because other aspects turned out to be more work than planned. Winter arrived and we'll need to get back to this in the spring. In the meantime, I plan to focus on the Quonset hut and the rest of the remaining concrete ribs.